Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast. Tiff's got a new haircut. We've got a lot to cover. Coming up, the Canadian Grand Prix Formula One. We've got the German MotoGP British Superbikes up in Scotland. And Tiff, and that was Tiff, about it, actually. Yeah, there Tiff. was nothing else about excitement internationally. So I think we'll go straight to the Canadian Grand Prix and uh, talk about what we really need to talk about because uh, that was uh, nothing else. On. <laughs> and it was a good Grand Prix. It was a good Grand Prix, wasn't it? It was actually it's quite exciting. I like yeah. I like Canada. I think it's a really good track. It, um, it always seems to bring good racing. And this one of those tracks, you know, and they have this huge amount of money they spend, you know, designing these new circuits. Uh, and the best track seems to be places like Brazil, you know, Sao Paulo, a natural little racetrack, and Canada, which just happened to be built where the roads are on that island. And it's funny, you can spend millions designing a circuit when it just happens to be a perfect racetrack sitting there waiting to be used. Um but of course, it was made better by qualifying. You know, it was all up and down. And the Alonso story, Fernando. Front row. Oh, he is incredible. I do get bored when he's moaning and he's, the games he plays. And I've said that in the past, you know, when he's winding people up and moaning about things not going his way. But boy, that man could drive and still can, you know. Crofty was delighted, waiting to say he's the, only the third man over 40 that's ever done. Oh, he does go on with his minor statistics. But... Uh, and also Sebastian Vettel, it was a funny thing because some of those that dealt with Alonso was quick in the wet. And they qualified brilliantly second. But I mean, Sebastian Vettel uh, was third fastest in the wet and then didn't make the first cut, qualified 17th. And Gasly as well. It, it dried out so much. There was a proper dry yeah. line, even a couple, well, uh, um, George Russell, uh, not George Russell, um, uh, Perez went to go on slicks. Went no, who go, went on yeah. slicks? No, George, George, yeah, George went for Took slicks. A bit of a Gaz, Gaz, was like, Gaz was second quickest in FP3 yeah. for his 16th. And the bizarre thing is, from what I've seen this morning with the Aston Martin press thing is, all this money on these cars, all these complicated, you know, aeros and engines, it was simply down to tyre pressures. And apparently Aston Martin boys, because they didn't know it was going to dry as much as it did, they put the pressures up slightly, and then, of course, the session was actually drier than FP3. And a little tyre pressure error, which put the tyres a little bit too high, ruined the handling. And so he goes from being, you know, third quickest to 17th, second quickest to 16th. They are fickle things, these modern Grand Prix cars. How can you make an error, though, in, in, in that sort of environment? How can you make a... That well, it's a gamble, isn't it? It is a sort okay. of, you know, they're predicting... So, so it's not you know, an error, it was a, it was a calculated... Yeah, they thought risk. it would stay... They didn't know it would dry out as much as it did. Okay. So the track dried more than an FP3. Therefore, those that put slightly higher pressures in, um, and then it ruined them. So I quite like I quite like it because it mixes the whole grid up. Alonso on the front row of the grid, Verstappen. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But um, but then also it does make it a little bit harder if you if one of the top guys, Leclerc or Verstappen, do qualify first as Max did, yeah. then it does make it a little, a little bit harder to get it, it yeah. race because you you because you, the, you know. Leclerc and, and, and Yuki Sonoda, they both had griddle penalties. They would go to the back anyway. I love George going for the slicks. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, good on him. You know, he saw a chance to maybe get a pole position and do something different. And he, it, it didn't work, but he, you know, just owned up to it. It was his choice and he went for it. Um, but then the race turned out to be a max masterclass. I mean, he's so on form. He's, he's got brilliant. the best car now and uh, he's withstood the pressure from Sainz. Um, of course, the race came alive thanks to Yuki. <laughs> well, come to, we'll discuss the teams and how they're doing. Also, half term, well, a third term discussion in a minute. But yeah, Yuki made another mistake, which uh, brought the race alive for all our spectators. The one big disappointment, I mean, um, Lewis was having his best race for a while, you know, and the manoeuvres he got ahead of uh, George. Since, since different... the first race of the season at Bahrain, yeah. that's the only yeah. time he's been ahead of George in Bahrain. But the only disappointment, because the engineer was saying to Lewis, you know, you're, you're, you're as quick as them. In fact, in fact, Lewis, you're the quickest car on the track in that last session. So I was expecting it's going to be a three-car dice for the lead. And that was the only disappointment that Lewis faded away. But, um, but again, the racing was exciting because not only is, is, is Canada a great fun track, but it's got three DRS zones. But so, aren't they too like, long, Tiff? Because it, it's well, no, but that's, but, you know, overtake. Or do you think without that's them, thing? Well, it makes the racing exciting. Yeah. But the trouble is, people are saying, well, that's because they can follow close. They seem to have got blind memories <laughs> from the past. And we've had races this close in the past. 
Um, and without the three DRS zones, I think Max would have dropped Carlos quite early on. You know, it would have been a boring last few laps. So yeah, it's still down to DRS and not down to the new regulations. With how close the cars follow now, they're obsessed. But it's, you're <laughs> right, you're right. And until you mentioned it last week, I got, I sort of, so you get bought into this whole height thing, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go closer, but actually, there's always there's hardly any difference. Well, because and the funny thing is, because we still talk about at every race, there's a DRS train, you know, <laughs> there's someone up the front, and you think, well, hold on a minute, why is there ever a train? Because should the second car in the train should be able to blast past the leader of the train? But it's just that sometimes there are some cars that are quicker in a straight line than they are around the corners, like, like the, the, the Alpine is quicker in a straight line. So it was, it was dear old. Um, Alexander Albon was lead, the big train leader in the, in the opening laps here. So he's sitting there with his Williams and he had an Alfa Romeo behind. But was it Bottas or was it, um, I don't know who it was, but it was um, Bottas or Thingy, Zhao. Yeah. But nobody could overtake him. And so he must have got a car that was so slippery in a straight line that he went with, with DRS. So a DRS train can only happen if the leader of the train has got a very slippery car. And the alphas definitely look quick on a lap, but not quick in a straight line. So, but there was reliability lots issues throughout the for, field. Reliability issues for Red Bull. Uh, poor old Sergio out of the race. Um, well, yeah, and another qualifying error. Yeah. Sergio, I praised him last week. I finally last week said, all right, I'll eat my hat. I've never thought, you know, Perez, but Thomas Owen loves him. He's an absolutely lovable character. And nobody's got a bad word to say about him. But you know, two weeks after Monaco, it was almost like, oh, they're equal. They're both going for the driver's title. Rubbish. And the, the point is, Perez only won the Monaco Grand Prix because he crashed on the last lap of qualifying. Because both Leclerc and Max were on faster laps behind him. Uh, so it, it made meant that Max qualified behind uh, Chico. So in a way, he almost only won the Monaco Grand Prix because he crashed in his qualifying laps. But He doesn't smile much either, does he, old Chico? He's a very serious no. lad. It's a bit cheeky, a bit cheeky, cheeky. Oh, maybe not. Uh, and came back. The other story of the race is the Hassies qualified really well. What were they? They were fifth and sixth or sixth and seventh, weren't yeah. they? they? They both performed brilliantly in the rain. Um, but came back. It was a copybook of Barcelona. <laughs> Yet again, he tries to get around the outside of Lewis Hamilton uh, on the opening lap, and bloody <laughs> snags his flipping wing. Hasn't he learned? Yeah, we all love K-Mag, but I mean, <laughs> it, was a, it was a move that wasn't going to happen. And yet he tried it because he keeps on trying everything. Fernando ended up grumpy in the end, didn't he? Moaning, I'm 100 <laughs> times faster than Ocon. <laughs> Stay behind, Fernando. Your engine's not working. We don't want to expose you to Bottas overtaking. Um, so lots of entertainment throughout, the, uh, throughout the, the race, all the way down. So I thought we'd have a look at the state of play. The state of play before we head off for the next races. Porpoising, of course, was still a big debate. And now the team of Toto Wolf's getting upset with uh, Horner and Bonotto for uh, not wanting to change the rules. And I'm actually, I'm with Red Bull. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Red Bull, the way they operate some of their press quotes and the way they dig at other people. But I think these are the rules and they've done a better job than the Mercedes and they've got to live with them for a year. I don't think you can change rules oh, no, uh, mid-season. So I think, you know, that all good for Red Bull. They've done the job and Ferrari have done their job. So you can't suddenly take away their cleverness just because Mercedes didn't get it right. Um, whether we can change the rules next winter, because I think the thoughts have been stuck with these flipping things for four years. And as you know, I'm not a big fan of the, the cars as they are. Um, I think they might need a, a rule amendment for, for 2023 to try and address some of the problems that we've found with the new designs. Um, but it's very much, of course, a Red Bull out front, uh, Max Supreme at the moment. Uh, Chico's still a bit up and down. Do you, do you uh, know, in sure terms of in terms of Max being supreme, uh, only six races ago, um, Charles, Charles, there's been a ninety-five point swing in the last six races. <laughs> Is it what, 95, 95 points? Ninety-five points in in six races. So oh, was forty-six funny. points clear, um, and the staff at the time was six in the title when when yeah. uh, Leclerc was forty-six points clear. And you and and we all thought, Craig, is, is game over. Yeah. So now but, but, uh, this happens 49 points in front of uh, yeah. the player. Incredible. But I mean, if we can just get both Ferraris and both Red Bulls going for a yeah, race. Yeah, racing, yeah. We should have some really good... Well, of course, we had it at Monaco, but the one time all four cars ran reliably. And they can't race against each other. 
<laughs> um, but anyway, so, so Red Bull and Ferrari get nine out of ten and ten out of ten for their start of the season. Mercedes, I mean, they're amazing for all this, you know, problematic. I mean, they're still solid third in the constructors' title. I'm going down the order of um, constructors' points as it stands. Who's going to finish? Still... Who's going to finish top driver out of in terms of points? I don't mean the best well, driver or anything like that. In terms of, I points. think Russell. I think George I will well. this year because you know he takes the pain and just yeah. gets his head down and has a go and. I think he's every bit as quick as Lewis, and um, it's yeah. a fascinating inter-team battle and how that will all turn out, I'm not sure. But it was good to see Lewis smiling, at least. and uh, <laughs> He's still mad. A man, a man, has gone mad. Wow, man. Um, but those three teams, so Mercedes are quite well clear in third of the points, but it's really this this second division, as I'd call it, that is the weirdest mix-up every race. McLaren, Isn't Alpine it? and Alpha. You never know who's going to be... <laughs> Eighth, ninth, and who's going to be eighteenth, nineteenth? I mean, McLaren, I think, are the biggest disappointment because you know they were quite quick early on in this season. You know, Lando, Lando's had a couple of problems. He had the tonsillitis, didn't he? So he wasn't feeling very well, and he's had a couple of car issues. And Ricardo was about to get sacked. The feeling was, but then <laughs> Daniel's come back and uh, matched Lando for the last couple of races. Although Lando, who hasn't had the best of luck, uh, Alpine, you know, we've got uh, the ever ever. <laughs> Alonso everly entertaining going up and down. Esteban Ocon, I think, I think he's got a contract for next year because they're talking about putting Piastri, their brilliant Aussie kid, I'd into Williams or something. I'd love to see but, Piastri um, in the Formula One car, whatever, where it is, wherever it is. I think Esteban's, he's, he's not, he's had enough seasons. He's not brilliant. He's very, 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 very good. But I can't see him really ever being signed up by Red Bull or Ferrari to take the place of a thing. Alfa Romeo, boss has had a bit off. He's had a bit of car problems and he goes up and down a bit. And Jean Yu, it's Jean Yu. I can remember the first name of Zhao. Bottas started so well at the beginning of the season, did he? He really had a yeah. good start to the season and he sort of faded off. Well, I think the car, the car started well, like Ferrari, with the Ferrari engines and the Ferrari sort of seemed to work well. But I think Zhao, he, he probably need, deserves a second year, but I'm not convinced he's anything more than a very, very good uh, driver with big Chinese backing. Um, again, he's, I always think of one of these young drivers or new drivers, whether they, whether Ferrari, Red Bull, want to you know headhunt them, you know, to get them in their team. And I can't see Zhao. I mean, he's got a very quick car and he, he drives it well, but not brilliantly. And then after those three, that's sort of second. We got the third division with Aston Martin down there in the third division with Haas. I mean, the two of them scraping the barrel, which is very disappointing for Aston. And uh, Sebastian Vettel keeps on showing promise. Lance, no, I think he's got. It. Dad, Dad, buy him an Indy car. Oh, please, Dad, give someone else a chance in that team, Dad. And I thought Lance might suddenly, being in Canada, you know, home home race and being wet. So I thought, oh, we're going to get another Lance Stroll. He's a, you know, we, he's a wet weather specialist. Very good, I yeah. know. Well, this is the frustration with Lance because he does seem to have the skills mm. in certain conditions, but he makes some rookie, he keeps on making rookie errors, you know, like in Azerbaijan, knocking his nose off twice in qualifying. And, he must be very frustrated with his dad in a way because there are these moments when you think, oh, flip and hell, he can drive a yeah. Grand Prix car. He can drive a Grand Prix Yeah, car. but he, he can't can. get it consistently and um, challenge him. But Sebastian's usually quicker than him. Um, Haas, we got, we got uh, Mick Schumacher having qualified sixth or something. You know, So I've now proved that I'm worthy of being a Grand Prix driver. No, no Mick. And Mick, you need a bit more than one good qualifier. But obviously the car was really good in those conditions because uh, you, you still weren't head of K-Mag. And don't forget, Max, K-Mag, Mick, Mick Max. Don't forget, Mick, the K-Mag is someone that was dropped from Grand Prix racing, you know, because he wasn't good enough for a super team. Um, so now I think Mick's got a bit more to, to deserve another season. And then we come to Williams, sadly right at the bottom, despite some amazing drives by Alexander Albon, uh, ringing all he can out of the... Uh, and, and he's embarrassing Latifi more, I think, than um, than um, Thing did. Who was with him last year? More than George. I think it, in George a way, Albert's yeah. always quicker than Latifi. The gap is bigger yeah. than the one with George, which is amazing. So Alexander Albert's did a fantastic job. Uh, and Latifi, I think there's already rumours Latifi's going, this Piastri story's going to go in. You've um, got, got to be fickle. I think so. I think you've got to be brutal. It's a business. Look what Red Bull did over the yeah. years. If a driver wasn't good enough, they got rid of them. They didn't oh, know. It was mid-season, whenever it was. And, and hats off to them. But then the other teams need the money. That's the trouble. There's so few teams that have the money to pick and choose the drivers they want, as opposed to drivers that bring, you know, £20 million to your budget. It's a shame. Obviously, you know, 
that's that's the way way it is. And back in the day, you, you, you certainly didn't uh, bring any money to the table, did you? No, no, I got to the Grand Prix driver. drive. Yeah. And I wasn't paid. I was unpaid. Oh, okay. So yes, I think Formula One. It's interesting, but we've still got these you know, very split up divisions. Um, but a lot of entertainment. And of course, the next race is home. Two weeks time. Get, all coming to know, the British it? Grand Prix. Where, where Silverstone Grand Prix. Silverstone. Did you just, where, hang on. Did you just just, mention I, Silverstone? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. It's a circuit where real driving skill uh, comes through. It's a really did long you just circuit. Mention Silverstone. Um, That's yeah, funny you yeah, should mention it's that. It's the next Grand Prix. Yeah. Why did, why did anything happen at Silverstone last it's week? It's funny you should mention that, Tim. Oh, that's oh, funny. You should mention it. Oh, sorry, oh, that's the Brian Tatch one. Oh, we, oh. <laughs> 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 I was trying not to mention Silverstone. I have. I was looking. I wasn't there. I mean, I was working at Strapston. But hold on a minute. Before we, you know, smile about trophies, I, I noticed on pole position on the, the Saturday race, but I, the pole position uh, holder finished 12th in the race. Do you understand how the, the pole position driver in race one finished 12th? Well, uh, I can explain. I mean, I was quick around Silverstone last year. I love Silverstone. I think it's a, a, what an amazing experience going around the Grand Prix circuit and, I, and pole position, my first pole position as well. Um, and then I just overcooked it. I was in second place, have a little breakaway with Jeff Newman, the championship leader, and uh, overcooked it going through maggots and beckets. It was slightly wet. It started to rain. Uh. I, I just went too fast. And <laughs> I had a moment and a half, the biggest moment I've had in in uh, my racing, my very short racing career, I went backwards all the way through Beckett and I could see it. I put my hands off the wheel and said, oh no, oh no. And I thought you were rejoined, heading to rejoin the track. Exactly. 90 but degrees to the competition. Backwards and through a whole swarming pack of caterums. It was the, how I was avoided was uh, incredible. We'll, we'll give you a roundup um, on, uh, on our YouTube channel. And it was funny because we were filming for television, which is uh, quite funny. So I was thinking, yes, pole position. This is going to be perfect. <laughs> you even said to me, this is perfect TV. You can't make this up. <laughs> and then um, I finished 12. But Sunday's race. So you started 12th on Sunday's race. Yep. Um, dry on race two. Uh, oh, by the way, 12th. So I dropped down to, I don't know, right at the back of that, there are 31 cars. So I think I dropped to sort of 28th or something. But because it started raining, it was brilliant fun. And I had a race one. Lose. You're back to race, race one, one again. So, so I'm bored with race one. I'm bored yeah. with race one. Now you finished 12. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you had to start the Sunday race in 12 and got which, through to podium finish. But it doesn't really matter at Silverstone where you start. As long as you can avoid all the argy bargy, and there's quite a quite a bit of argy bargy. I've got one bit on my um, uh, Xbox, uh, V-Box where there's five wide going up Brooklyn's five wide, nine behind them, just laughing. And uh, but it, massive it, slip stream. That's massive slip stream. It, those it was 121 yeah. miles an hour. I did the caterings are supposed to 116, but V box said 121. So it's the fastest. I got. I got the. Very set, I got the. I set the fastest lap ever for a road sport around Silverstone yesterday. Fastest until lap someone beats it. Until Fred Chinnick beat me by a <laughs> tenth or. Or two tenths, or I don't even know. But you I, led for a bit. You got to the front of the crazy pack, did you? For a couple of times. Yeah, I did, and promise you, there's no excuses. But before I went out, I didn't even test my car. I just drove to assembly. I put my foot on the brake, and there was no brakes. It was completely soft pedals. So I, so my quad. How many right, times have I told you to I pump know, your pedals up? How many times have I told I you basic so I, checking? Pumping, pumping, pumping every corner. But maybe the soft braking going into the corners actually. Benefit. Oh, do you be a lunatic like the rest of the cage? Yes. So <laughs> anyway, um, I led the race, but, but uh, there was four of us in a breakaway, and I managed to hold off um, William James in fourth place because on the penultimate lap, he got me on the undercut. So then on the final lap, I knew he was going to do it again. So I blocked that. So we had a practice session before, but. So my, I got a podium, I was all, all emotional. It's the first time on a podium, because you had this podium place at Brands Hatch, you showed us the earlier trophy. But yeah, but that was given you, you were fourth in the race, but someone was given a time penalty. So this is your first actually standing on a podium. And I yeah, wasn't and I did, there. I know, I was gutted. I was gutted you weren't there, actually. I was a bit emotional, because on the Saturday, I really had a moment. I had a sort of near death sort of moment. But but it was brilliant and amazing experience. The whole Cajun team and everybody there. But the race of the day was our mate Paddle Up, Joe Priday, who yeah. also, believe it or not, he qualified second. So front row lockout, myself and Joe. Race one, he messed up. He completely messed up. And he messed me up as well, because we had this plan, go through Croft as fast as you possibly can, the first circuit. And if yeah, we've got get... it on to MotoGP okay. in a minute. Yeah, can we get it on MotoGP <laughs> in a minute? Anyway, I don't, I don't want every detail started, lap by lap. Started 23rd, 
and he finished the race six, race two. I saw so, it. Joe, one of the wonderful characters. All the catering characters are there, of course. I, I lived it, lived it with you last year. And so, yeah, great for Joe Priday. Priday, I would say Priday. Priday. Yeah. Easy I, I, looks I, as it spells. I was, I was going to pick Joe up, give him a bit of. That's I am. I've, I've just picked him up. I just, picked, I didn't, just didn't want to know the lap by lap analysis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm you know, very proud of this little Cajun series. And of course, all the other Cajuns there, the Academy boys were there for the first time and yeah. uh, all the way through to the 420s. So we'll cover that <laughs> separately on our Exactly. YouTube. I'm sure you will. So <sighs> let's go to MotoGP. Go to Germany. Let's go to the Saskian ring. Really hot, apparently. I mean, these MotoGP boys, I don't know how they do it anyway. Um, but Fabio Quattararo, the reigning French Japanese Yamaha, won again. It looks like he's definitely going to take a second consecutive title. But um, it was so, he had this big battle. The only the Ducati that was trying to, the factory Ducati was a disaster for him. Bagnaia was on pole, but um, Quattararo got him off the line. And then he just dropped it on about the third or fourth lap. But it was so hot. The, the tyres and the track were just melting. And it was a, it, the back just went and down he went. Um, so Quattro is stretching out his championship lead from the Aprilla of Alex, Alex Esparago, who finished oh, third in the end, fourth in the end. Um, but it's a Ducati disaster, really. They've got no chance of the title now. In fact, the leading Ducati driver is now one of the Premac uh, private in the satellite boy, um, Johan Zarco, who finished a really good second. And also Jack Miller was third, very popular third for Ducati. So MotoGP very much going Quattro's way. The riders were so hot. I mean, Zarco was interviewed there. When the, All those oh, leathers it, on. And it's a, yeah, and it's a non-stop action, left-hand track as well as anti-clockwise. And um, who's who's uh, Marcus? Who took Marcus's place? I forget. On the factory Honda, and he almost retired because it was burning his foot, burning his leg. Um, the other factory driver did retire. He had a crash in. Um, it was that the other Esparago? Was it Esparago's brother? And he hurt his ribs. It's just too hot. But in fact. Um, Bridle, Stefan Bridle, the German, was put on Marcus's bike. And earlier on, they've got this problem now, MotoGP, when they're following the heat off the bike in front, is overheating the front tyre. So if you follow wow. closely for too long now, there's a huge problem. It's a bit like DRS or following closely in Formula One. They can't follow closely in bikes. Um, Bridle said that in the opening laps, his hand was getting burnt with the heat of the bike in front with the exhaust and the fumes. And he eventually had to back away and pull away and just lose the toe slightly because his hand was just too hot to, to open the throttle. Wow. I mean, Imagine. they go through some pain. They really do go through some pain. Um, but Moto2, great, but Sam Lowe's was, but Sam Lowe's had an awful time recently. He, he, I think he's had six DNFs through his fault or someone else's the last six races. And his on pole position had a fabulous, it was more like the Moto3, really great battle for third place. Um, they're all battling for the second, actually, because Augusto Fernandez was out front and, and went away from the rest of the pack. Uh, but it was a fabulous bias. And Pedro Costa, of course, the Moto3 champion, he was uh, the one that was battling for second and third. He finished second. Um, Jake Dixon qualified fourth, but dropped back to 11th. So not such a good weekend for Jake. But the Moto2 race was probably one of the best races of the day. Um, Fernandez now up to third in the championship. Uh, Moto3, no joy for the Brits. Um, it was dominated by the, the Spanish boys. In fact, Ivan Guevara. Guevara. Um, he's one, there's three on the trot he's one now. And he was the, he's another, he's 17 year old now. And he was a product of Acosta. Acosta won the Moto3. They were teammates last year, but Acosta got the better of him. But in fact, um, Guevara had beaten Acosta the junior Moto3 championship. So he's a real super talent. And he disappeared out front, um, won two in a row. Uh, but the Brits, John McPhee, still making a comeback after he missed out five or six races mid-season with an injury. He qualified 13th, had problems, then he got taken out of the first corner. Um, Scott Ogden, um, the little younger lad that we hope we had a great future for, he qualified 10th, his best qualifying, and he had a massive high side. He was running about 11th. Normally his problem is he'd lose his ground on the first couple of laps because he's just not used to the, you know, the intense, massive, mass great chaos of Moto3. Um, but he had this high side. A couple in front of him sort of clashed and had to back out the throttle. So he sort of went to pull tighter to get inside the two in front. And just, just he just squeezed that little grip in fifth gear and it just, the rear went and it just spat him up in the air. Huge high side. Comes you, on the telly being interviewed by Suzy. Mind me, I'd smile if I was interviewed by Suzy Perry, even though I was, if it was broken bones. <laughs> and he's there, hi Suzy, I'm a bit, all right. 
unsupportive to uh, to Scott or not on Twitter? Did oh I no! Something? Oh, okay. I was supportive to Scott, but I didn't mention because um, um, I was sort of saying at long last we've got a young I didn't a young driver John. coming through. And they were so oh, well, what about John McPhee? That's very insulting to John McPhee. John McPhee's twenty seven. <laughs> Is in that his tenth season of Moto3? We Moto mentioned 3. John McPhee every week. Every week podcast. because we've been supporting him because he is the best British Moto3 rider. <laughs> but he's not going to be a MotoGP champion. You know, he's very good. He's, he's only won three out of 178 races. He's very good. It's, um, there's, a, there's an element of Scottish. The Scottish Scots say, "Oh, you, you didn't mention him because he's Scottish and he's not English." Oh, I don't care. He's a British rider. He's a very, very good rider. He's been he, through a hard time this year. You know what it's um, like if you say you like apples, or what about oranges? Don't you don't like oranges. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, of course, we, support, we, we had um, all drivers, especially especially the we had Danny Kent. I mean, Danny Kent was a champion, yeah. Motor Three champion, five years ago. So we have had a youngster come up but fade away. And it's just that you know the guys that are going to be a MotoGP star do two years of Moto Three. It's like Formula Three, Formula Two, Formula One in in, mot in car racing. You have to have that momentum. The stars need to win, 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 and go forward. So anyway. They're at Holland this weekend. So Scott said, yes, good luck to Scott. And of course, Josh Watley. You know, I didn't mention him either. You know, he's having a bad season. He's, he's a teammate to, to uh, Scott, but he qualifies 25th and 26th. Hasn't really got on the pace yet. So no, I didn't mention him either because Twitter's only got so many words. <laughs> Idiots. Anyway, Moto3. I don't think he's been rude. I think it's just, I think it was just, I don't think he's been rude because you do get some obnoxious people. I don't think he's been rude or obnoxious on Twitter. It's just how it came across. Yeah. But, we do support them. Um, British Superbikes, the only other racing really of international, was not international, but of, of British interest, up in Knock Hill, spectacular. It's becoming the Bradley Ray, uh, Jason O'Halloran show now, British Superbikes, both on uh, both on Yamahas. Aren't they? Yeah, both on Yamahas. Yeah. Um, Bradley won one race, O'Halloran won two races on the Sunday, Bradley had a second and a fourth. Uh, and Ray had the championship lead and O'Halloran is now closing in, so it looks like a bigger battle with two, the two Yamahas for the... Uh, 16 points to 3, 216 to 200 points. Yeah. So it's all, all very close to the top. And again, very entertaining. Randocchio was a pretty wild race. So, yes, yeah, so the highlights of the, of the weekend were, you know, Max Verstappen, um, Jason O'Halloran, um, Sam Lowe's, and Paul Woodman. <laughs> Where are so you next, at next, Paul? Before we go up to next week, we've got to say a big uh, congratulations in a different sport that we're going to play tomorrow. Uh, Matt Fitzpatrick for... Uh, the British Open, yeah, golf. Uh, the US Open, golf. So, uh, yeah, golf, golf, brilliant, because that is that's a phenomenal achievement. I think only the third or fourth Brit to ever do, have done that. Uh, so next weekend we got um, WRC. It's in Kenya. Um, oh, yeah, Kenya, the old safari, yeah. not quite the safari of old. It's more a stage rally, but still a big test, big yeah. test of man and machine, hot. Yeah, you just demanding. mentioned uh, MotoGP in Holland. Uh, BTCC is back uh, from Croft. Croft, it's always pretty uh, special. It's always spectacular be every crazy weekend. Crazy Croft's there. always good. Um, I met up with Paul O'Neill on the weekend because I um, and he sends his best regards to you, by the way. BTCC, good, Supremo, British GT from Snetterton. I yeah. like Snetterton. And after their one weekend off of <laughs> about two hundred years, um, uh, NASCAR boys are back. They're Nashville, back. Well, they're, I bet they're bored having had a weekend off after <laughs> first weekend off since February. Oh, what do we do with the weekend? What do we do? What do we do? Nothing to do. When are you racing next, along? Tiff Nadell? Oh, not to good one at this rate. I think my 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 owner of historic cars, all the events clashed with jobs and other things. So uh, I've had a quiet season this year. Why didn't you do a stint in the uh, Caterham? Would you go into one of those races? In the <laughs> because you might beat me. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> separately, no, separately. Oh. No, no, oh, no, no. You go in a different. You go in for team. I'd, get, I'd get hammered. I'd get. I'd get hammered. They're a bit, they're a bit, a bit competitive as well. And you've got nothing to prove. Formula One, <laughs> in the Mans. I'll just, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just chill. I'll just chill. On that note, I'll see. I'll, but I will see you, Donaldson. I'll, I'll when you have, when's your next catering? We know now we've had the podium. We need the win. When's yeah. the next one? Donington in um, only three weeks' time. Okay. I don't like right. Donington. I've only driven no. there on a track day. I don't like it. We'll go and do more testing then. <laughs> I haven't got the time or money. We need a sponsor. Sponsor. Yeah. Sponsor. Like Doc. We need it up there on the break. We're sponsored by. That's what we need. Uh, absolutely. All right, well, thanks for joining us. Right. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye.